According to my new favorite website, Sony Alpha Rumors, Sony is about to release two new cameras that could very well be game changers for sports videographers, especially those of you with a limited budget. Hey guys, my name is E, I'm a professional sports videographer, and yes, the Sony rumors are flying and they are juicy. As a matter of fact, there's actually three new cameras that are rumored to be coming out this summer, but to be fair, one of them is most likely gonna be the ZV-1 Mark II, and to be honest, Ain't nobody got time for that. But there are two camera rumors that did grab my attention, and the first one is the Sony FX10. I, for one, am a big fan of the FX3 and the FX30. So the idea of an FX10 as a real entry-level cinema camera, rumored to be priced around a thousand bucks, sounds very interesting to me. And the Sony A6700 rumor is even more interesting, because if I understand correctly, we're talking about a Sony FX30, but with much better photo capabilities. Because that's always been the, the drawback with the FX series, is that even though they technically can take photos, they are really built specifically for video. So the A6700 is rumored to be a fully hybrid camera, just like the rest of the Alpha series, but with the video features of an FX30. So we're talking in-camera stabilization, we're talking 10-bit color, 4K 120, all that stuff. But before I start talking about the actual specs of each camera, let me first tell you when and why you should start shopping for a new camera. You have no idea how many sports videography beginners reach out to me in the comments or in my DMs because they just learned what rolling shutter is or what focus breathing is and they're now convinced that they need a new camera. It almost makes me sad in a way because if you worry about things like focus breathing, clearly you're overthinking this because every single second of video you ever shot in your life with a mirrorless camera has some level of focus breathing in it. And it's only when YouTubers started talking about it that it all of a sudden became an issue for you. Talking about focus breathing is like my favorite thing to talk about. Holy shit, there's nothing I would rather talk about. So my advice is to stop worrying about things that you can't even notice. Because I promise you, if you can't notice it, neither does your audience. Instead, the only thing you should worry about is whether or not your current camera is holding you back. But be honest with yourself though, because there's a big difference between being held back by your camera and being held back by your camera skills. And there's nothing wrong with your skills holding you back, by the way, because you can always work on them and improve them over time for free. I would definitely recommend before moving on to a more complex camera that you at least know how to properly expose a shot, that you know different composition techniques, that you know how to use the different types of focus, because there's no point into getting into a more complicated camera if you can't even master the basics. So keep working on your skills until you reach a point where it's clearly obvious that the camera is what's limiting your growth and then buy a new camera. That's why when I'm shopping for a new camera, I'm not looking for the latest new flashy feature that just came out. Instead, I'm looking for a camera that is super reliable when it comes to very specific things that are important to me as a sports videographer. For example, I want a camera that gives me a decent result in low light because more often than not, as a sports videographer, I have zero control on my lighting situation. And also, I don't want to have to worry about overheating at all because we all know that overheating in the middle of a game could be a huge issue. Basically, when recruiting a new camera body, I'm not looking for a John Morant or a Victor Wimbanyama. I'm looking for Patty Mills. He may not be the best player in the game, but he's a reliable workhorse that consistently meets my expectations game after game. And speaking of Patty Mills, he's also an ambassador for today's sponsor, Bellroy. Bellroy is an EDC company which has a huge range of accessories, wallets, bags and cases for people like me who always strive to be as efficient as possible and also care about well-designed and responsibly made products. One of my biggest pet peeves in life is to carry too much stuff on my person. I hate it. I don't have any cash, I barely have any keys, everything is on my phone, even my cards, and this is actually from Bellroy. If you take game day for example, I bring a lot of equipment, but I hate filming an entire game with a huge camera bag on my back the entire time. 
which is why I use this Bellroy photographer sling. I only put a couple lenses in there, batteries, headphones, variable LEDs, a few accessories, and everything else stays in the car or in the photographer's room if there's one. That way it's much less heavy, obviously, but it's also much easier to access something or make a quick lens swap without having to take off the bag. But the real reason why Bellroy reached out to me is because they've joined forces with Patty Mills to release a limited edition collection which features a duffel bag, a sling bag, a backpack, a tech kit, a wallet, and a passport cover. I've got the tech kit right here actually, Bellroy sent it to me and it's definitely another item that's perfect for someone like me. Every time I need to edit on the road, I just grab my tech kit and I know I'm covered from all angles. I have my laptop charger, a phone charger, a couple extra cables, earphones, extra hard drive, the whole shebang. And I also really like the indigenous art inside the tech kit and throughout the collection. Apparently the bird and the sea turtle are Patty Mills family totems and the patterns around them represent community and travel, which I think is pretty cool. So like I said, this is a limited edition collection. So if you like what you see, don't waste any more time and click on the link in the description below. Especially that by simply using this link, you will automatically get a 10% discount at checkout on everything you buy, whether it's part of the collection or not. All right, so let's go back to the Sony rumors we're all here for. And let's start with the Sony FX10. Looking at the rumored specs, I think one of the key features here is the AI processor, also the FX body, which means that you get a fan, so overheating is not a concern at all. And of course, the ability to shoot at 4K 60p is great because there's not many cameras at a $1,000 price point or lower that can actually do that. In fact, Sony doesn't even have one right now, so this would be their first one. So yeah, if the Sony FX10 does come out with those specs for $1,000 or less, I think I might have to buy it, test it, and make a proper video about it because this could very well dethrone the Sony ZV-E10, which is the camera that I currently recommend as the best budget-friendly camera for sports videography. But if we now look at the rumored specs for the Sony A6700, things get really interesting. Because this one, in my opinion, is more for people who already own a budget-friendly camera and are looking at taking things to the next level. But I do have a few concerns. It's basically a Sony FX30 with the new AI processor. So again, you get improved autofocus technology. You also get an EVF, which is great for photographers, and hopefully there's a flash as well. But I don't think that there's any space for a fan on that body. So I'm very concerned about overheating at higher frame rates. There's also another rumor that the 4K 120 feature could only come in later on a free firmware update, just like they did last time when they released the Sony ZV-E1, and you all know how I feel about that nonsense. But if you don't know how I feel, just click on the video on your screen right now to see how I really feel about the Sony ZV-E1 and to also hear my explanation as to why Sony keeps releasing new cameras back to back to back. Otherwise, thank you again for watching. My name is E and I hope I earned the privilege of your time.